What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how we installed a 20x20 20 20, uh, VersaTube cardboard on existing grade. First thing we do is put the base rails together and then we'll set those into position. We'll mark out where the footings need to be, pull them away and we'll dig the footings. We use that a jackhammer with a spade bit, makes it really easy to dig, especially in Arizona. Then we put the base rails back into position, make sure they're the right measurements and they're square and we'll pin them with stakes so that way they don't move while we're pouring the concrete. We'll put the ground anchors in and then uh, we're ready for concrete. So here we are mixing up the mud and then we'll uh, just shovel it into the hole. We try to keep the concrete about an inch below grade so that way when it's all said and done we can backfill the concrete with, uh, with dirt so you'll never see it. Kind of just lightly smooth it out. Here's kind of how it ends up looking. And then again you'll just backfill over top of that so you'll never see the concrete. Then you go and put your trusses together. Um, you can follow the instructions. You should, um, but just forewarning, they can be a little ambiguous and vague, so be careful with them. Uh, kind of use your common sense. Uh, all the pieces really snap together like that. Sometimes you gotta give them a little extra kick to get them into position. We use impacts to set all the self-tapping screws. They say not to use impacts because you can break the heads, but we do them. We use them anyway. On these longer runs of metal, we'll use a string line just to make sure that uh, it comes out straight. You know, some of those long runs have like three joints, so if you don't string it, it can come out kind of wobbly. Now when you're setting these, uh, this webbing for the trusses, don't fully tighten those, um, the bolts until, it, until the webbing is all, all set, because you kind of want to slide it around a little bit. Just kind of finger tying them, and then once you got all the self tapping screws in, then send it home. Definitely going to want a couple impacts to build one of these. Um, I mean, even this job, that red impact you see, that Milwaukee, that was really hot at the end of the day. I mean, I didn't, that thing was smoking hot. So here's kind of the finished uh, truss. Now, when you're setting these trusses, um, this one was 20 feet wide by 7 feet tall, so it was definitely manageable by just, you know, us three here. I mean, one guy could set that truss, but when you get into the ones that are 40 feet wide and, you know, especially the height, if they're like 12 foot tall, they can be pretty sketchy. So keep that in mind. If you got a building that's like 40 foot wide, you may want to get a, like a machine, like a boom lift or a crane to set these trusses. They can get pretty heavy. Now, when you put the trusses into the base rail, don't put the screws in just yet. I put those in at the very end of the job. That way you can kind of plumb those trusses as needed. If you put the screws in, you're kind of setting it home forever. I mean, you can still move it, but I just like to keep it out until the very end of the job. Keep in mind, usually on most models, the end trusses don't have webbing, depending on the width. But um, like in this case, only the th three inner trusses had webbing. So don't make the mistake by putting uh, one of the web trusses on the end. Here I plumb the four corners and then I kind of use the sheet metal to plumb all the inside trusses. I string the peak, try to make, you know, get an eye on it, see what it looks like. Kind of want that to be nice and straight. The first sheet's pretty important. Make sure your overhang set. Make sure it's a uh, you know straight and perpendicular and squared onto the trusses because it sets the tone for the rest of the sheets. Uh, you can see there I got a two by eight that I slide in uh, through the trusses and I'll stand on that like a scaffolding. That helps a lot. Makes it go easier than going up and down ladders. Um, on the sheet metal, you know, we use the self-tappers with the rubber washers. Keep in mind, you don't want to over-tighten those and you don't want to under-tighten those. If you over-tighten them, you can break the rubber, and then if you under-tighten them, it can leak. So there is a sweet spot when it comes to um, these screws. Keep that in mind.
Um, here you're going to see me blowing off all the shavings. That's what I'm doing right there. So all those shavings that come from the self-tappers, you want to blow those off because if you don't and it rains, it could leave little rust stains on the, the painted sheet metal. Uh, your second row of sheet, your sheathing, you do want to try to make sure that's straight too. You know, you want to stand underneath the carport and look at it and make sure that it's running in a straight line. Because if it's not and you send it home, you're going to get down and regret it. And you only got one chance to kind of set that correctly. It's all about getting that first sheet perfect and then the other sheets go on really easy. Not much to it from here though, pretty easy. Just make sure everything's lapped correctly. And that's it, here's the finished product. Uh, this was a 20 by 20 by seven foot tall carport. We did it in two days and came out pretty good. Customers are happy and uh, it's gonna last them a long time, guarantee it. So thanks for watching. If you guys got any questions, uh, let me know. All right, have a good day. Yeah, I think so. Bye.